Paul. <laughs> Apostle Paul. What's your dream? And I know teachers ask you all the time, you the young ones especially. So we should always go back to his word and to Jesus and we push ourselves forward and toward that goal. everyone. So today's the day that I talk to you. Oh, look at my hair. <laughs> uh, today, um, I'm doing sermon. Class one was actually asking me, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, you will see me soon on the screen. And here I am. Hello. <laughs> okay, today's uh, title for our sermon today is called Press On Toward the Goal. And it's from Bible passage, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. We would like to quickly look at this passage. Um, you can read on with me if you can see that. Okay. Uh, Brothers and sisters, I don't consider that I have taken hold of it yet. But here is the one thing I do. I forget what is behind me. I push hard toward what is ahead of me. I push myself forward toward the goal to win the prize. God has appointed me to win it. The heavenly prize is Christ Jesus himself. Okay. Um, this is, oops, I didn't want to actually spoil that. <laughs> Does anybody know? Oh, actually, just looking at that picture, I don't know if you know uh, who that person is. Maybe older kids already guessed. Oh, this, I know, this passage is spoken by somebody in the Bible, very famous that Dr. Lee talked about him. Many people before us um, in sermon, in church, talked about this guy. And his name is, anybody knows? Huh, huh, huh. Paul, <laughs> Apostle Paul. He wasn't Paul before, actually. He started out his life with the name Saul. And this picture shows you that man. And this guy was the guy that really believed in God, he, he thought. And he was the guy, uh, man of Israel, and he was called Jew. And he was really trying his best to make sure that he believes in God the right way. And he was making it so sure. He was always reading God's scripture and he was doing everything that was right to do. And one day when Jesus was living and when Jesus died, he found out that this guy called Jesus was the man that was leading so many people to believe in him. And he said he's God himself. And he said he's God's son. And he just died on the cross. And a lot of people followed him, and they were called Christians. And then he was thinking, what? This is not right. That Jesus guy, how, if he's God's son and God himself, Messiah, that God promised us to come, how could he die on the cross? That makes no sense. And that guy is just false. And these people who believe in that Jesus man is all just wrong. So then he made sure that all these Christians, all the followers of Jesus would just go into prison because they were doing the wrong thing and he was going from place to place to capture all the christians and he even made sure that if you know from bible uh, stephen the man of faith even when he was stoned to death by many people that thought that jesus was the wrong man he was making sure that stephen would be put to death and he was the leader in all that situation and he was just just so sure and he was even getting the letters from the leaders to say, now you can go to Damascus. You can even go to other place to get all these men of Christian followers of Jesus to be put to prison. Go, go, go. And he was going to Damascus. Um, and in, on that way, and maybe you heard this story a lot from church. On that road to Damascus, he was just met by this great light. And he fell on the ground and he was like, what is this? And he couldn't see anything. And he heard a voice. He heard the voice of this person that he never even met. And then he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you doing this to me? And, and Jesus said, actually, it was Jesus' voice. And he said, go, go and, and just know that it is me, Jesus. I'm alive and I'm the man that you've been persecuting. You've been saying wrong. I'm not what you think I am. I am God. And, and Saul was just 
devastated and he was just totally broken. And for three days, he couldn't eat. He couldn't do anything. He, he, he was just praying, I'm sure. And even the, actually the picture looks like he's just puzzled, but he, I'm sure he was just almost going to death. Um, thinking about what has been, what he has been doing to Jesus or to the people that follow Jesus. The man that he thought was wrong was the true living God himself. And now he was thinking, oh no, this is not what I meant to do, but I'm so sorry. I'm sure he was repenting and saying sorry for three days in a row. And Jesus came to somebody called, a prophet called uh, Ananias, and then he said in Damascus, and he said, you have to go to Saul, um, and he has to meet you, and he has to be healed, and he has to go and preach about me, Jesus Christ. And Anana Ananias was thinking, what? Well, he was persecuting the church. He was persecuting all of us who followed you, Jesus. What do you mean? And Jesus said, no, he will be changed and he's changed and he met me. So you go and tell him to go and tell about me. So Ananias followed and obeyed Jesus' word and he went to uh, Saul and he healed, uh, he touched his eyes and then his eyes were healed. And from then on, Saul just went on to actually totally be changed and repented. And he actually now went out to preach about Jesus Christ himself. And today's passage actually comes from all of that. Um, and I, I'm not going to read everything, but this is from Philippians chapter 3. And, and Paul says to people, uh, actually Saul was also Paul and his name, he, he changed it to be called as Paul, Apostle Paul that we know from the Bible. And, and it's, he said through Philippians 3 how he, has, he had so much to boast about. He was so confident with all the things that he did or all the things that he had as he was the man of Jew and as he was the follower of God's uh, scripture and he was keeping all the rules and um, he made sure he did everything right. And if you see from verses 5 and 6, I mean 5, he says all the reasons that he had to be the man of righteousness, to be the man of, you know, people could call him a good man, good uh, God's uh, man. And he even, you know, went out to make sure that he did everything right. But he found out when he met Jesus, nothing that he did was meaningful. And that all that he thought was great was nothing great because Jesus was the one that he had to know, that he was the one that he had to believe. And in that faith, now he knows everything that he thought he had to try for his goal was nothing. And now because of Christ, he knows that he has that power and he has the real goal. And the verse that we looked at today, he says, and now I push hard toward that goal, which is that price is nothing of this world, not money, not the power of this world, but Jesus Christ himself. And, and knowing that, um, People ask you, you know, people ask me when I was young, even nowadays, you know, you ask each other, what's your dream? And I know teachers ask you all the time, you young ones especially, you know, they always come to you and say, what's your dream? What's your dream? What do you want to be? And I will just share a little bit about myself. When I was young, people ask me that too. And I said, you know, I want to be a kindergarten teacher. And well, I didn't know anything, anything, but I was still young. I was still a child, and I just loved children, even as a child. <laughs> I had many cousins, and when they came to my house, I loved to read to them. I told them stories, you know, and I, I just enjoyed that so much. And I said that because actually my mom, this is not my mom, actually, <laughs> but it, this is a picture that I found from the Internet, but she was actually a kindergarten teacher and director. Um, and I saw her teaching little kids all the time, and I felt like I could do that too I want to do that too I want to be my like be like my mom and then um, and I said I will be kindergarten teacher but a lot of uh, my relatives and even my parents maybe they said you know you should dream big you know just teach little ones you should teach big people you know adults and be a professor and I thought oh okay then I'll be a professor you know whatever you say <laughs> and that's what I I think what I said when I was young and then when I became like a 
middle schooler. Somehow, I don't know why I did this, but I went to church retreat. And back then, we uh, didn't have Google site presentation like now. So then teachers said, uh, they gave me a paper and then said, okay, I have questions to you, you know, talk all about yourself. And then they um, asked, what's your dream? And there I said, I will be h y u n m o y a n g c h o And I don't know if I was joking. I don't remember what I was thinking, but maybe I wanted something realistic. And then uh, I was drawing a picture of like, that's not my drawing. by the way, but I was drawing the picture of me like getting married to this man, whoever that was back then. And then I wrote y a m o Yang Chao, which means like uh, being a good wife and wise mother. And I don't know if I knew what that meant, but I was like 12 or 13. And I said that was my dream. Um, I mean, just thinking about that, it's, it's funny. But anyways, um, But then actually, I, that's not my picture. I'm sorry, I don't have my own picture, but I just got these random pictures from the internet. But um, then actually I found out that I liked music, even though I still wanted to be a teacher um, since I was in high school for four years in the uh, United States and English wasn't my language, I thought. So I thought uh, to teach in the States, I'm not good enough. So I, my music teacher said, you're very good in music, so you should study music. And I just pursued my degree in music, and I sang, and that was my degree. And then after that, I thought, I want to use music to be helpful to people. And then I went to um, uh, this uh, university in Philadelphia called Temple, and then I studied music therapy, therapy for some time. But then um, I actually got married in the way, <laughs> on the way, and I also had my first child, Micah, um, and I felt like, you know, this, I don't think this is my call. Uh, all this music business, you know, it's all about music, 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 but I want to do something more meaningful and, and somehow just having a child I felt like, I think I have to stop here and I'll maybe go on later on. And I was having a family, um, this is Mr. Micah, Mr. Caleb, or Caleb, <laughs> and, and they were still little and I felt like, okay, I, I just have to raise my children and I have to just be faithful to my family. Um, and then I, uh, as my husband began to study um, Uh, theology uh, to be a pastor, then I had a chance to learn about biblical counseling um, at the school that he went to. And, and then I was like totally struck by God's word. And it was like the moment of, wow, you know, uh, uh, just uh, awakening, <laughs> feeling like, wait a minute, why was I running back and forth toward finding all these answers from somewhere else. Um, and I was realizing this is it, you know, the Bible, God's word. This is where all the answers are. And um, I was studying that and, and that's what I studied so far. <laughs> and of course, you can see that um, you don't see me being a professor or a kindergarten teacher. I am a teacher, but um, even though that was my goal, as I said, when I was young and my dream, um, I was thinking, you know, what's my vision? What's my purpose? What's my goal? Um, and, I, I, you know, my, I had my husband, my, I, my children, and um, am I, uh, can I still dream and have vision and goal? And God called our family, actually, um, as missionary. Um, as my husband became a pastor, we were called to do missions in China. And um, I thought, oh, I'll go to China and do all the things that God, God called me to do. But then God gave me Peter <laughs> right at the moment when we decided to go to China. And this is Peter with my three sons now. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. You gave me Peter. <laughs> He's so, so jung, you know, a precious child. And I guess then in China, I'll just raise my children. That's my call. Okay, that's my vision. Okay, hyeonmo y a n g c h a Okay, way to go. <laughs> and I went to China and... And there, I found out there were so many things to do, actually, as the person who studied music, who loved children. And I didn't actually bring pictures that I, how I was working in China because I shouldn't be showing the pictures of people in China. So then, um, you know, I was, if you can see that, it's like all in Chinese. I was learning Chinese in short time and I was teaching music. They, you know, in China, they were back then uh, looking at this kind of music with numbers, not the music that you see with the staff that I was teaching you guys in music class. <laughs> and I was teaching music, I was teaching 
praise songs to children there because they just believed in Christ and they didn't they wanted to praise God but they didn't know these songs so I was teaching them that and I was here and there and and I was like wow God is using me in these things and I didn't even plan these things I had child because God gave me child and and this is what God is calling me to do and then but then I came back to South Korea and we thought we will go to the States after the mission missions work and after four years there God called us to Korea <laughs> and here I am I've been here for about 10 or even more than 10 years and I've been teaching here teaching these beautiful children <laughs> do you see who you uh, these are you know these little ones in class two right now <laughs> I found these pictures and I think you guys were like first grade and second not even second grade you guys were very young back then um, and and you guys were silly back then too <laughs> you're still silly but um, and and I love my job here. Um, and, you know, I ask the same question to myself. What's my vision? What's my purpose? What's my goal as a teacher here? It's not like I wanted to be a teacher, so I studied to be a teacher, and I followed my dream, and I followed my goal. It wasn't like that, as you can see, even though it was a brief uh, history of myself. Um, I just followed what, what God um, intended me to live and, and how He was setting up my life. And I was just obeying His, His word as I was going on. And even now, I'm still following His word to teach you here, to be with you guys and to be able to teach your word and, and to share your word and also be able to teach you math and science and all these good things, music. Um, and people will be asking you, what's your dream? What's your goal? What's your vision? What's your purpose? And just like Paul, you know, Paul was having his own dream or his own goal. You know, he was making sure he was right and he was working very hard. Of course, I'm not saying you shouldn't work hard. Of course, you, especially high schoolers, <laughs> you got to be working, working and you should be studying and you should be following whatever dream you have right now. But but in the end, you know, that goal, that that um, center core of all of that is just like Paul, you know. Jesus Christ. Without him, nothing is, you know, worthy. So we should always go back to his word and to Jesus. And we push ourselves forward and toward that goal. And that price is not money. As some of you say, this is my dream to just earn money and be rich and be just famous or just, just be lazy and have money. <laughs> but guys, let's, let's just like Paul is saying in today's passage you know let's go forward and toward that goal which is Jesus Christ you know having him would be your goal and and I pray that you guys will have the same goal as me and I'll be praying and finishing this uh, message today let's pray Father God thank you so much um, thank you that you led me to JCS right now and to be able to be here to share your word and to share um, Paul's message in Philippians and how Paul believed that he was the righteous man, that he was doing everything right and perfect. But when he met Jesus, um, he found out that our real goal and prize is Jesus Christ himself, to be having relationship with him, to be dying with him, to be living with him, to be resurrected with him, and to be with him forever and Lord I pray that our students at JCS even though they need to work hard as students right now because that's the job that God gave them right now but I really pray Lord that they will never forget that it is Jesus Christ that they need to get um, in their lives that they will have that goal and price as their utmost goal um, Lord thank you for being our Jesus Christ our goal we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.